What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Dead War. Let's play as the pirates. And so to pick up where we left off, we have taken London. Now we have massed our forces in the north of the country to attack this force under John Churchill, which is the last remaining strength um, on the British Isles. So we're going to use our artillery mercilessly here because we have no choice. And um, we have a significant component of elite troops and a good mounted element. Yeah, this could be tricky. This is why I've stacked the deck somewhat with uh, with more troops behind. Um, but anyway, let's get it. Let's crack on and attack John Churchill. So I, I do have my howitzers, so I'm going to want to use them quite tactically and focus on priority targets such as uh, the Marines, the Engineers, and the Grenadiers. Uh, my foot artillery, I'm going to hope will buy me a reasonable amount of um, latitude in the musket fights and then the pirates they're gonna have to be quite delicately placed so let's put a gun team in the field two militia units deploy Ooh, I love this position for a gun team so let's maybe pick up another to militia just to bulk out the center although actually it might need to be get these buccaneers out of the way two three four five it's quite densely placed there two marine uh, two militia to hold the flanks in whatever way they can. Uh, let's drop some buccaneers along my line. And that'll leave me with these two here, I believe. We can go on the flanks and engage the enemy. And then we will want to use our artillery mercilessly. Carcass shot right off the bat. That's a lot of troops. So you hit the unit of marines, you hit that unit of grenadiers. My guns will engage. Well, they're engaging the enemy uh, artillery. Ooh, good positions for artillery fire. So let's get my first regiment of artillery to attack. The regiment of horse. Looks like we're not getting any effects noises. Hmm. But keep my howitzers firing because they need to do as much damage as possible. Although I might actually. Well, really soon I'm going to have to pick. I mean, I do like this target for my artillery up on the hill, actually. Brunswicker Dragoons and regular Dragoons. Just blast the cavalry. I mean, the general's bodyguards sneaking up. They didn't watch out. My buccaneers will have a go. More carcass shots. Good hit. So here comes the unit of Brunswicker Dragoons. Keep my Buccaneers back as a counter charge element. Volley at range picks off one Dragoon. Okay, no, actually, you can't. Oh, I thought they were going to go for the wrong. Try fire off a canister shot quick. No, but they did break the enemy. Okay, my artillery. Pirate artillery. Howitzer on the left, focus on the right. Howitzer on the right, focus on 
Actually, you're all, you're pretty good. Spread out the uh, militia to maximise fire. Push up one unit of buccaneers ready to counter charge. Push up another unit of buccaneers around the flank. Push up the buccaneers. 12th regiment are wavering already. Under marine, under the militia fire. Deadly canister shot as they charge up the hill towards us. I think the 12th are upset from the artillery fire. Buccaneers counter charge into this regiment of horse. Counter charge the second. Let them know what it takes to engage the pirates on the field. Ooh, could be a good shot here. Push up the buccaneers. Bring down the buccaneers from the north. Those buccaneers charge the 28th. You continue to engage the cavalry. Pivot, you men blast the line infantry. Yeah, getting some... Push forward, men. Buccaneers deploy into the center. Those are marines. Buccaneers versus grenadiers. I don't think that's going to go super well, but it's the hand we've been given. Run these marines around to the rear of this enemy fight. All you've got to do, apart from the carcass shot that's going to do terrible amount of damage. Get both my gunners to engage the 6th regiment to the rear. Okay, my cavalry's moving in on the right. Well, their cavalry's moving in on the right, I should say. Bring this militia unit into the fight. You men pick on the 28th regiment, who are steady. The grenadiers will likely not fall that easily here. These colonial militia must charge the 5th in the rear. Charge my militia down the hill into the Dragoons. You can knock out 28th Regiment, that'd be great if you men could knock out the Foot Guards. To be honest, there's quite a few sections- ooh, that's not good. Uh, regiment of Horse coming in. We're still trying to knock out the- Okay, you men engage the Grenadiers. Both of these units keep attacking the 28th. These Marines are going to engage my Gunners in melee combat. Looks like we have managed to repel an enemy unit. Okay, good. Let's get some men running over. God, I thought that was a block of enemy dead troops there. I thought, God, that's a lot. You men charge the grenadiers. You men push up to face off against the artillery. Push up my militia to continue engaging. The buccaneers keep skirmishing. Yeah, this is where they're going to break us. They're now pushing on to the howitzer unit. So you men, Sands Buccaneers line up against the Marines. Buccaneers get over to this fight. In the center, another unit's broken through. We've got to abandon the guns to their fate. Are their gunners actually still shooting? They are not shooting. But now we start to bring in our reinforcements. So get my buccaneers into the center. You men engage their marines. Got their own unit of marines and regiment of horse. 
Okay, now the guns are firing very well. Buccaneers pivot to engage. Actually, you guys pivot to engage their marines. The guns on the hill. Get my marines down here rapidly. Okay. Redeploy one buccaneer unit or two buccaneer units up the flank. Get a militia unit to face off against the enemy unit here. You guys keep running. The artillery is pounding the sensor. These marines charge the enemy dragoons in the rear. My general has fallen. There are grenadiers in this action. The marines are slowly picking away my force. But we are causing some consternation for them. So let's run this unit of marines up. Yeah, there we go. So we've now... You've thrown in our... Our force. You guys engage the 7th with canister shot. The question is, will anyone remain? Because as it is, this is just wearing down Britain. Maybe it might be an idea to try and limber you guys up and form a form a defensive line where my reinforcements are coming in from. Especially if I get a 12 pounder. A second sneezing coming. There we go. Okay. So yeah, my pirate force is shattered. However, the enemy are in a pretty poor state to deal with me. Every unit they attack in every area, every unit they prosecute, another unit replaces it. <laughs> so many dead pirates. Hello. Coming in from a different position. 12 pound a foot. In fact, then you guys just set up here. But yeah, let's form a, a, as cohesive a uh, position as we can. Charge you men into the regiment of horse as this little pirate pa pirate package flees. Fear not, brothers. You will be re-equipped for the fight to come. There we go. Thirty-seventh coming our way. Looks like we're going to mop up the third regiment, and the eighth have actually returned from action. So form up, and then they're going to advance to take out the thirty-seventh. As so the artillery advances, retreats, I should say, back to. Got to get a lot of buccaneers in this army. Push up. Push around either flank. Keep running, see if we can try and disrupt either of the actual see they've they they're just going back to their defensive position and repositioning, so that's why I kinda wanna just Set my guns up on this high ground. So send one unit one direction, another unit the other way. Although you are, yeah, you're not in a good spot either. Engage the 37th. More militia. Form up on the right flank. 
They may come back. Form up my militia near the gun line. They're advancing the second foot guards towards us. Got my buccaneers behind the guns. Then you guys can switch to round shot, engage the enemy. Militia form line. Get you men back. Yeah, there. The Marines are now wavering, down to 45 men. Send. Well, it's not said anything yet. Right now, we have the artillery advantage because their guns are probably shooting at us towards over here somewhere. There we go. So now our militia have the strength to take out these remaining enemy units. The second foot guards are shattered. 37th are continuing to engage. Let's let my new force get into line. More, more loads of militia. There we go, 37th are also wavering. From the artillery fire and combined musketry of two militia units. Continue to chug away. Actually, let's push Buccaneers up the wing to give them something else to shoot at that's not the 32nd, considering they are upset. They've repositioned, ready to meet my charge. The 32nd are going to rout because they are cowardly dogs. Gunners engage from range. So let's select our little pirate brigade and advance up the original line of advance. Weakened marines, weakened regiment of foot. Only their general is left. The foot guards are down to 48 men. Sporadic artillery fire continues so let's push up our lines a little bit let's give everyone some backup let everyone that's entering the field enter the field. You should have some interesting angles to attack the enemy. Yeah, killed. Oh no, you didn't kill that chap, you just knocked him over. Killed that guy though. But yes, what's really going to get them is this uh, the flank from the colonial militia. And the occasional prodding from the artillery. I might get these guns to engage the 6th foot guards because they're actually in good shape. There we go, so then begin to advance this flank forward while at the same time advance up my other flank. Everyone's engaging the marines, but let's 
improve our odds somewhat and advance. Oh, hello. The 37th came back. Charge, Buccaneers. You can't stand here getting shot at. You're already upset. If you don't speed up, you're going to get really upset. Mortified, almost. Okay, get these guys to run up this flank. There you go, the Buccaneers have hit the line. Getting some good kills. Remains to be seen if it's enough. The 33rd can engage the General's bodyguard. Ooh, a lot of dead officers there. So the 17th should be enough to attack the 37th. There they go. Continue to kill them while they are fleeing. See if we can shatter them, which we did. There we go, the Marines have, have gone down. The General's gone down. Let's run some Buccaneers around. seal off the square. We keep the artillery pounding, but everyone is actually in a uh, fairly good position. You guys may actually advance like so. The 50th are under fire, so understandably they are a bit miffed. So this gun team can actually cease fire because they're missing, causing problems here. 38th Regiment advanced to fill the space left by the 36th. The 33rd have also routed after losing 17 men. The enemy's capable of putting out... The 35th are also wavering. The second life... Why are all of you guys wavering? It's not because you're f necessarily because you're far away from your general, because you're losing hardly any men, and then you're routing. And the 35th are also almost going to rout. They're wavering. They're under attack from the 1st Grenadier Regiment. I have to get the light foot in there, because these guys are just cool. going to keep running away. There you go, let's ease the pressure a bit from this musket war. Yeah, the 17th have routed from... for some reason. That's the Grenadiers defeated. Now let's squeeze the pocket. Cease fire the last set of guns. There we go, the enemy is... Their moral fibre has finally broken! No need to continue the action. The enemy is dead. So we are currently sat... Yeah, we've lost the general and probably another unit. Mr Churchill has pushed hey, south to Cornelius awesome. Bellamy. You will replenish and drive south. Hola, Jack De Silva. You're going to need a lot of replenishment, so much so I'm probably just going to mix you in. So apparently, it makes no difference with pirates, but I'm experience level. So this, experience, this militia unit is experience level 3, this one is experience level 0, and the upkeep cost changes, obviously, because they're different units, but they don't actually gain anything from that experience. Neither do Buccaneers, so you may as well just... Merge and recruit more, because there's no imperative to maintain the experience like that. Just keep, just keep merging. Colonial, colonial, colonial militia. Keep merging to reduce your uh, upkeep. Forward, humble, 
dump some more troops from there into here, so we probably want one more for artillery, one more howitzer, and then that's it, I think. I'm also to recruit a general. But apart from that, London, uh, the, uh, England is almost completely secured. So let's take you. Actually, let's take... So first of all... Oh, actually, we can do a lot of recruiting, actually. As is, you're already recruiting. You're already recruiting. Newcastle's being repaired. Okay. So then back into the Americas. Ooh, some farm upgrades. But I do need to spend some money on... These areas in the Midwest. So... First of all, I think we need to repair, try repair, garrison building at Upper Louisiana. Spend whatever little money we have on replenishing them, spend whatever money we have on replenishing Mr. Montalban. But apart from that, things are going pretty well. Uh, in terms of our income, we're at 17,000, which is huge. We're going to get two measuring tools in two more turns, which is pretty useful. We need to keep our port upgrade program going. We don't have to worry about the Cherokee, because they're raiding Spanish territory near our coast, but not our territory. Europe is going to carry on being Europe and likely try and interfere with my pirate affairs. But apart from that, I'm tempted to go for Copenhagen, because that would remove Denmark from the, uh, from the campaign. 13 colonies wants peace, they're not going to get it. I would like to go for the Brits in Algiers, but I don't think I'll be able to make it past Gibraltar. Unless I take Morocco and Gibraltar. Construction, fishery, basic roads. So let's recruit a sloop. So we want to keep going with our port upgrade program. I mean, you have one town, but I'm just... just there is isn't. There is a legitimate request, I think, if you're... If you very much need uh, your towns to grow, whether or not you should go for... Uh, fishing ports or for trade ports, cause especially because fishing ports... They actually allow you a route to get fourth rates without the uh, research demands. Okay. New port emerges in Panama. Yeah, we're sorting that out. Cartagena. Let's build a Zebek. Oh, no, not a Zebek. Sloop to go occupy the port. 15,000 because probably we're going to be earning... We're going to be take getting less pirate piracy income, probably because people have been blockaded somewhere. The United Provinces is looking quite scary. Who are they actually at war with? Oh, we can't see. Unless... no. I can't see. Cornelius, Bellamy, just destroy John Churchill's remaining force. Hiya! Cornelius Bellamy, steady under fire, and a confident general. Good stuff. So you men can replenish and advance down to London. You can advance down to London as well. Can't recruit anything. Got the Royal Navy set outside here with a couple of second rates. I mean, if I was a good naval commander, you'd jump on them to try and get hold of the second and third rates. Uh, got a spare sloop. Can't really send it to... Well, let's send it to Liverpool. Because Liverpool needs building. 15,000. Okay. So I think I want to spend a bit of time. Now I've taken the British Isles. Just dumping some money into repairs, upgrades, expansion. Oh god. Hello, United Provinces. How are you doing? Well, we definitely want to take out that fleet. Hmm. Hopefully they've got some... Hopefully it's like a, a second rate and two brigs. And I can jump on it and steal it. But I don't think I'm going to be so lucky. No peace. 
no peace. So, so, okay, measuring tools. Good. Roads are built. I mean, do we also get steam? Oh, no, we, we already had steam pumped pumps. Right, okay. So, we obviously want to dump a bunch of cash into the mines in Mexico. Fairly sure we've already done the ones down here. Yeah, we have. Port upgrade program. Again, it's not it's not just about the um, trade implications because obviously there are no trade implications. It's about the generation of wealth within the town because you still get bonuses for building trade ports even if you have no trade with anyone. So let's get this sloop over to Puerto Bello. So our port upgrade program is going okay. We've still got a bunch of ports to go, but in terms of our technology, we've not. Well, we're not we're not at risk of advancing too quickly up the chain. We're going to want to take this force out of port here, leave a sixth rate, and go after Jan van der Kraven who just has a series of floats, so let's take him out. We're going to fight them ourselves just to make sure that we do actually destroy the fleet and uh, the army itself is brought into our custody. Fifth rate's up front, followed by floats, fifth rate, respilt galleon. Okay, so if I deploy like this... It's kind of close. So a couple of their ships were already in bad condition, but these would be good additions to the pirate fleet, I think. Um, but it's going to take us a while to get here for them to get to us, so I'm going to drop the recording and see you guys in a second. Right here, yeah, we're going to be re-engaging or, or engaging the Ottoman fleet rapidly and I never realized actually even though you obviously got the sync the indicators up here about how well the morale and their ship structure is doing they're all on 16 guns remaining so keep on sailing prep your broadside right so if you don't fire it well ultimately they're gonna broadside you or you're gonna broadside them I very much like to be first. We got more guns to bring to bear. Come on! We have to fire at the back half. To be honest, actually, they've only got sixty-three crew. So sail up there to take it. You can blast Tergos with chain shot. So you're gonna fire a broadside right with chain, switch you to grape shot, and then blast some grape shot at Princess Carolina. So you've got 63 crew, so let's see what happens. Fire your guns. Oh, your broadsides aren't firing again. As is tradition. Your right broadside works. Okay, now your broadside fire. Now you fired it. get everyone sort of in the right patch of sea. They're actually winning. They get to the, if they actually cause my flight to rout, need to 
pump broadsides. Okay, your broadside isn't... Alright, your broadside's not working either. God's sake. Can't even fire broadsides of the pirates when I want them to. But when they fire at weirdly timed intervals. So what, you got 18 guns on the left, they're already to rock and roll. This Floyd is also on fire. A fire chain shot into Wolfswinkel, if you can. And pivot and fire chain into Tergos. Sixty men compared to my one hundred and thirty-two. This flight's taking the Princess Carolina. So hopefully the same thing is going to happen here. We're going to be able to take the enemy ship. Oh, we've got some hits on her mast, but not enough. Let's make the flute fire chains. because if you've got chase cannons... No, you do not. Actually, do you? In the... If I stand back here... No. I can see some guys standing in there. But that's the crew for the deck, for the guns that are firing. A stern. Well, not a stern. Just firing normally. Come on, knock out a mast. Why is it so hard to knock out a mast? Oh, a lot of chain shot firing off there. Nope, still not enough. It's the last ship on the sea. Car over Luti. Fire off a broadside. Oh, this should be good. Is that the captain climbing up? It is. He's having a good look. See if it kills him. Broadside from near me. Oh god, there he goes! <laughs> what a hero! He lands on his feet. But well, there he goes. So Wolfswinkel is routing. Obviously we don't want them to rout, we want them to surrender, so we're just going to continue a bit. And let a couple of uh, broadsides bring her into service. Well, bring her into our service. <laughs> Two floats, not bad. And all those Dutch prisoners are ours. And let's upgrade the farm, because we have the money. Apart from that, we don't have a lot of cash to do anything else. Let's hop back to... England and carry on spending our reinf our, our uh, finances. So Jacques Blauvelt with 300 crew, 300 men in his uh, in, in his unit. That's an absolutely massive general's unit. Poor old Cornelius he has to steal has to stick with 48. Okay, let's hit end turn. So, the anti provinces could become a bit of an issue. It's part of the reason why potentially landing and going after Copenhagen might be so useful. Is that it would allow us... So, so we can be declared war on again. 
Uh oh. Louisiana is coming for us. <gasps> Don't block my ports. I think Louisiana may have just enormously cocked up. Enormously cocked up. Because I'm here with an army. They can't cross into my land without trespassing against the Spanish. Unless they want to go all the way up here, cross over and come in from the east, I can just hold this bridge. Which is what I'm going to do. And they've now left their... Uh, with Theodore, they've now left New Orleans exposed, which means... I think I can get this sloop. Recruit a replacement. Take this force and Howell Montalban out of Charleston. Away, well, first of all, well, they, they can see the port's got no one in it. Sail around Florida, hit the port, march to New Orleans. So now, thanks to all of these guys marching north to try and attack me, we can take out their capital. But before we do that, let's just make sure the... Port upgrades are continuing, at least mostly. We are going to do some repairs. Um, but anyway, that's promising to know because it shows that we can still be declared on if the enemy desires. But let's attack New Orleans and take it away from the Louisianans, considering they have very, very kindly moved their entire army away from us. We can attack them, destroy them, and bring their city into the fold. It's oh, a great position for my artillery. Let the pirate hordes deploy. And then like a, a horde, we can swarm over them. So let's deploy three behind my main line. Three buccaneers by my main line, a buccaneer on each flank and my general slightly off enemy cavalry on the right which make them run let an almighty roar from the pirate guns be heard across the land it's caused significant damage for this mortar garrison unit but let's get the howitzers to actually pick off some of the slightly more important targets. So imagine if you're the gunner, you're there going, don't worry, they're far away, that's fine. But they're... They're on the move. So, oh, don't worry, they're gone. <laughs> we can see the volley hit the pirates. A lot of them got it back up. <laughs> uh oh. Yep, I saw that. Go get him, militia. My militia can hit the enemy cavalry quite nicely. There you go, we've now closed the distance. Although, that, okay, push up the pirates. Support this gap. Get the ball rolling on this flank. Divert a pirate unit to hit the 7th horse. Divert a unit here to advance forward and hit the 22nd regiment. We're seeing Louisiana troops routing. Get my pirates to advance. There you go. Buccaneers to hit the 22nd in the rear. They won't like that very much. Get my pirates just to run up to here. All my guns engage the 17th that are holding strong in the center. Keep my buccaneers actually on the move towards the artillery positions. Although you've you stuck with my previous com previous order. There you go. 
the Louisiana flank here is just completely crumbled. So push on. Push on to the guns. Yeah, they are coming back. But it's just push on like the tides. That's more to garrison troops. The light cavalry's on their way back. These poor aren't native bowmen. <laughs> Absolute swarm of pirates on their way. Carefully placed artillery does some damage here. Everyone else just run around the cavalry to hit them in the rear. So the fourth light horse have now engaged, but they have they have a sea of blackguards against them. Seventeenth, yeah, the seventeenth regiment of foot <laughs> did come back temporarily, but the pirates have swarmed over the enemy positions and sent their forces reeling. So. Is there a hidden bow unit somewhere? It would appear. Oh no, maybe not. Hurrah! Louisiana was taken, and Theodore to the north will be. <laughs> yep, there we go. They will disappear. They will retire back to their homes after they realise it is not worth trying to fight us. Let's upgrade a couple of. Upgrade a couple of farms. Actually, let's not do that entirely and rebuild Mobile. Upgrade this farm here. 16,000 this turn. Great. Oh, Panama. Obviously, lots of things need to be upgraded, but one more turn till we get separation of powers. I don't have a do I have, have I not built a gunnery school yet? Oh no, I need to reorganise procurement, didn't I? Yeah. So I've just gone down the I've just gone down the economy route, really. Very well. You can go back to Upper Louisiana. You have a choice of either going north against Denmark or east. Which I don't think well, to be honest, we could probably deploy you guys north. Okay, actually, how far are we off? Only four more regions away, actually, until we've successfully uh, completed the long campaign in the eyes of the campaign. And and, and like I've, I've said it before, that is the point where we'll kind of throw it open and say, okay, what do you guys... How do you guys want me to play this? Do you want me to carry on playing it and do a true world domination, or would you rather see me do something else? Because I imagine it's going to get potentially a bit repetitive. More repetitive than normal. There we go, so we've got a separation of powers. Commercial ports have been built, fishing fleets have been built, clearances have been built. So now it's all about upgrading the plantations, even though they're not necessarily the most valuable things to do. They just help provide more income. Tobacco or cotton. Uh, cotton it is. Okay, we are still at war with the 13 colonies, so I might actually... You guys probably aren't going to be at war immediately. So you can probably go back up the, the coast towards Williamsburg. So you men can replenish. We need to recruit another general. And then fill out this army with the remainder of these scallywags. And launch them against Copenhagen. We could actually send a ship to scout. Unsurprisingly, many enemy dangers. The Georgian Navy. So Denmark has a stack and a half. So I'm probably going to want at least three, ideally four, just to make sure things go well there. Still a 16,000. 
Any orders? In theory, I should do that. <laughs> Drop the tax levels down immediately. It won't be very good, but in the long term, the tax the tax penalty will be will be very much in our uh, in our favour. I am going to try and not take over that many territories in North America because it kind of feels a bit like cheating almost. Spain's... Okay, Spain moved out to attack the Cherokees. We probably want to jump on them when they get back into Chikasa. Because right now... Yes, no peace for you, good sir. So... Still spying, kind of unnecessary. Good, lots of good economic buildings built. So let's upgrade some farms, especially um, in these territories like in Louisiana, especially Upper Louisiana, because you get quite a reasonable number of towns actually here. Or is it? No, that's Michigan I'm thinking of. My mistake. Upgrade the Weaver's Cottage. For cotton plantation, governor's mansion, fishery. To be honest, you also want to start rolling out roads. But you can't really do that much per turn. Otherwise you start to run out of cash to build the armies. So that's three armies. You want yes, sir. At the ready. a general. Benito Baker. So you need a howitzer and probably another buccaneer Your unit. Make ready. And the Roche Cunningham will probably begin to be another another one. I've still not repaired these buildings here either. Never mind. You both, both two admirals have got three bottle man. Nice. Let's hit and turn. Oh, there comes the British fleet. There's a lone Dutch ship. Spanish are going to... Ooh. Curious what the Spanish are going to do. Whether or not they're going to clear out the Cherokee, which is possible, or are they actually going to do something a bit more mischievous and go for my land and start raiding my stuff? That would be most, most unfortunate. But in the grand scheme, I just want to build up my economy. As much as I can do, anyway, in terms of my tax base. Which now we have the... We have the ability to do that now. We have the... We, there are no immediate battles on the horizon. We have some naval engagements we don't have to worry about, but we don't necessarily have to... Uh, worry about our survival in the short term um, but it looks like the Ottomans are going to start breaking the end turn phase so just a second everyone I will see you when things start rolling again and we're back as usual with a Hanoverian peace offer or peace request and a Württemberg peace request which they're not going to get got a rake in England 13,000 okay, let's repair the Weaver's Cottage Let's do some investments in England. So Benito Baker needs a howitzer and his force will be complete. Mr. Cunningham. You look for some gunners first, then some just a massive block of troops. I mean, our income's actually been flat and it's gone down this turn, which isn't ideal. Hmm. Hmm. Roads would help a lot. Well, I say that, it wouldn't help immediately. Yes, my lord. Yeah, you're still raiding. Run out the guns. 
A lot of trade out there. We might even want another trade fleet. Which we kind of have. Okay, so let's send you guys out to West Africa. You guys can spend the rest of whatever cash I have trying to repair whatever I can. Yeah, they're coming down to chase down this Cherokee force here. Might cause us some issues, but that's why I want to keep shadowing them a bit. This chap's going to be on his way up to the frontier against Williamsburg. Let's hit end turn. Spain's falling back, so maybe they were trying to do something a bit sneaky. Because they only pulled back once I redeployed my troops to kind of get in their way. But I think what we're going to have is another... Oh, I thought they would... I thought they would break it again. Yeah, 13 colonies are pulling back, noting the pirate horde is now just on their border. Got some new builds done. Just dump a bunch of money into more warehouses or more... Uh, more plantations. Your Majesty. Get one of our agents over to one of these one of my armies. Lords. Two, three, four. Three more units, so you could probably do with a militia, militia, and buccaneers. But I think my immediate target, my preferred target would be to go for Copenhagen, because that would at least remove Denmark from the campaign. Let's actually get this fleet back out raiding the northern trade route. Their income is... well, I mean, I know it went down because I knocked down my policy a level, but I was hoping it would start to uh, be counterbalanced by that more rapid growth. But there we are. Um, anyway, looking at the time, man, because we're getting quite close to the end of this episode, I think this would probably be a good place to stop. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for, hopefully, uh, the invasion of Copenhagen in, in the next episode. So thanks for watching. See you later, everyone.